So the first thing you want to be doing in this game is going from your Krugs straight to his. So just miss all your buffs. Just go straight to his Krugs. All right. So the first thing, <laughs> the first thing you should think about is I know because you're fiddle six. You're probably gonna. You don't have to full clear, but to be honest, that's all I really want you doing. Unless something happens. Actually, you know what? Let, let's start again, right? The most important person on your screen right now is this person right here, the beer, right? That's the most important thing. So you should be thinking about what you want to do against this chick. You have three options. You can invade her, you can try to avoid her, or it's just going to be like a neutral kind of full clear. Because Lilia is a neutral full clearer like yourself, both of you are probably just going to do six camps and then you're just going to go whatever. So it's important you understand where you want to end up on the map. So in a game like this, where you have... What the fuck? Where you have a Darius top lane with Ignite against a Fiora, this is a very, like, snowball-y matchup where kills really matter. In fact, even if Darius was against a tank here, I'd say top is number one, just because with Ignite, you have so much kill pressure. So your chances of getting a kill... And winning the game, you know, just easier for yourself, are going to be top lane. After that, I'd probably say, honestly, like mid is melee against melee. That's kind of similar. So every lane here is like kind of good to path towards, right? So that's the first thing. In every champ select you're in, just think about the enemy jungler, the first thing. Then think about where you're going to path, right? So in this game, if you don't path towards Darius, I'm closing it. Let's go for an invade. I don't really care about all this. Oh, Jesus. Darius had TP? Yes, definitely. If it may be like if it was a, an Orn or a Maokai or some shit, then it would be questionable. But if it's Fiora, you definitely go there. Right, so what just happened? So we got a bunch of kills, did we? And now, like, we're 10 seconds away from the buffs. Okay. Right, so after that happens, you're not going to get any more kills, right? I don't think you are anyway. Like, after this, these guys are both full HP and you have a Kaiser and an Akshar next to you. The chances of you getting a kill against a Caitlyn Janna, who might still have their sums, I don't know. Doesn't really matter. You're not going to get any more kills. So after this situation dissipates, which it has right now, even though it looks as if it hasn't, in your mind, you should be thinking 10 seconds ahead. So in 10 seconds time, you should be like close to your blue buff starting it. Nothing else is going to happen here. If you're playing, I don't know, Sejuani and your fucking W's up in two seconds, of course you keep chasing. But you're playing Fiddlesticks, right? And you're next to a Kaiser Akshan, there's no more damage here. Or CC anyway to get the kills like this. Even that damage, even though she's 100 HP, it's like the same as her being 500 HP. Like who cares? The kill is never there. There we go, the clears, you saw walls, yeah, I like it. You know the clears, right? So if you know the clears, I don't, you know, I just want you, I just want to skip through it. Okay, so Lilia shows on the map here, which is really important, right? So when she shows on the map after doing her raptors, it's really important for you to look at her. She might be on 200 HP. She might be on 50 HP. Yeah. All of that stuff is information, and what League is about is reacting to the information and making the best play in that moment. So when people ask me, do you farm or do you gank? It's time to shut up. You have to gather all the info you can in those split seconds you have, and then you're going to know what the best play is going to be. If Lilia is on 100 HP there, 200, 300, it's very different to when she's on full HP. You make a different decision. If that's the case, you just tell Akshan to be careful and you continue clearing, knowing you can't really do anything there because you're kind of low. But if she's 200 HP, you can always think about running mid after you hit 3 here. But the only time you kind of look mid, do you even look at her here? Let's have a look. Yes, yeah, so you don't even look at her here. So, okay, now you look at her. For some reason, we're going all over the place, right? Turn your fucking camera mover speed down. So go in your settings. It'll be game, I think it's in. And your camera move settings with your mouse. Turn it down by 10. Like, just straight away. Down by 10.
So for some reason, like you click on it, which is good. Like that click is actually good. But then we're like, let's look at our raptors. Let's look at this nice like fire cauldron here. Yeah, it's nice. Eh? Look, yeah, a bit of a tree missing. Yeah. yeah, there's a couple of trees here. There's a nice yeah, two walls here. There's a few flowers around. Yeah, no, 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 no. Lilia, fucking all the time. When she shows on the map, you look at her. Sounds a bit fucking toxic me saying that, but she is the most important person, right? So when she shows on the map, level two, beautiful. And we saw her doing the raptors, didn't we? On the map. Why would she be standing at the raptor camp, you know, kind of like moving back and forth on the map if she wasn't doing them? So she's done two camps. She's got eight CS. So we look at her, right? That's the first thing. You fucking look at her and then you press tab. Why do you press tab? Tell me. I'll tell you, actually. You press tab to look at the CS. That's the first thing you look at. Now, the reason you look at Lilia first is because these buffs don't show on the scoreboard, do they? When you press tab, if you don't look at her here, let's just say you're looking at Raptors still. You can't tell on the scoreboard if she has her buffs or not. So maybe she just did Raptors because the level one was kind of whack. Maybe she just did Raptors and is now like waddling over here like this. You never know. So you always look at them first. Then you press tab. Good for CS, right? So she's got eight right now. She's two camps away from level three. Really important to know as well. You're already level three. Now, in this situation, I think you can make a really fucking whack play. It's going to look whack, but for some people it will make sense. This is the play, I think. You go here, you get priority, and then you run to a blue. Looks retarded, right? Like, what the fuck? Why would you ever do that? Like, I can just full clear my camps and hit level four. Yeah? So can fucking anyone. Hi, you low jungler. Like, a thousand LP. Straight here, get prior, bang down here, because you know Lily is like 45 seconds to a minute away from level 3. You might even think about just running there straight away, but it's risky because top lane doesn't have prior. Yeah, doing f like full clearing doesn't do anything, right, in that situation. Like, you would only full clear, bro, if it's a, like a kind of standard neutral game where nothing has happened. Or you might think, well, instead of full clearing, you just do these cams, then you do red, and then you gank top. Because Fiora might be in that position still. Right? So you see how everything at the moment is dictated by other things on the map. Like, fuck what you were doing. So that's what the best players do. That 99% of people don't. That's what I do on Trundle. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, these doing these don't mean anything. When Lily is a level down, two camps away, like, it's time to go nuts. I don't care if you're on Fiddlesticks. I don't care if, you know, Flop smurfing on his fucking, you know, on his Janna and he's, you know, like, reset toward, uh, I don't know, the blue buff. I don't care. So you pinging enemy missing here does nothing, right? So if you were going to ping, tell me what a better ping is. Now, keep in mind who I said the most important person was. Who is it? It's not Alistair, is it? It's not Yi. The player ping, what do you mean? So you ping what, Lilia, or you like kind of look at her and then ping her? Yeah, okay, so you, like, actually click on it. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Honestly, like, that's a, that's a pass, right? That might be, like, an 8 out of a 10 ping. But I want you to look into the futures I know, all right? This is the key, mate, to jungling, like the nuts. You look into the future. Tell me what Lily is going to do in the next two minutes. I know exactly what she's going to fucking do. Do you think your team knows? No. They won't know until fucking the high elo, whatever high elo is over here. Blue, yeah, she's going to do blue. What else is she going to do? She's going to do blue and something else. Because I know for a fact that... Because, by the way, I don't know if you know, but if you do raptors and red, you need two more camps to hit level three. Right? So if you do three camps, if you want 12 CS for level three, you do both your buffs, and you either do Krugs and Gromp, but no one does Krugs. So it's either blue, Gromp, red. Or if you do raptors, it's like this. So red, raptors, wolves, blue. That's level 3 as well. Okay, so raptors and wolves don't give you enough XP with both buffs to hit level 3. So knowing that, 
Well, I would. Well, if I was you, I'd be like, right, she needs two camps here to hit level three. You might even just run straight out of wolves, or probably wolves is like a little bit overzealous, but just looking to do something here. Right? But in terms of pings, I would be pinging like this. So your danger ping, I would be pinging like this on her camps. Everyone can see her here. You know what I mean? Like, everyone can see her there. It's obvious. But this bot lane is going to see her there and be like, oh yeah, Lily is fucking mid, we're fine. But they probably don't know where she's going to path. Every jungle CS is the same, by the way. Everything. So dragons, rift herald, scuttle crabs, buffs, camps, everything is 4 CS. Everything. Alright? So if you see 20 CS, you take a dragon, it goes to 24. Everything's 4. So in this situation, like Darius kills Fiora. What should the Darius do, chat? I know instantly he should recall straight away because the lane's in a good position, but he'll push it, no doubt, and leave himself vulnerable. So because of that, you should be pinging again. So 20 seconds is now gone since Lilia, you know, ran to her walls. 20 seconds, you never know. She might be fucking level 3 now, running top lane to kill Darius. Fiora has TP, right? You never know. So the more you think about the enemy jungler, and just the more you think in general, the more you win. When Master Yi runs away from mid lane like that, where has uh, Nun Nuts gone? What's he done in the last 10 seconds? Tell me. If you get it wrong, stream ends. Scuttle? Scuttle's a good shout. Maybe he has. To be honest, I was thinking he just warded. <laughs> maybe he did do the maybe he did do the crab. Do you reckon he did? No, there's no way. There's no fucking way he did crab. Yeah, there's no way, right? Yeah, no. Yeah, he hasn't he hasn't done crab in that time. If it was another mid laner who had CC who could break the scuttle crab, maybe. But yeah, I just had to make sure there. No, nah, no, nah, there's no way he did crab watch. I mean, maybe the jungler is there. Yeah, again, like, this is why it's kind of AIDS doing these camps. So another way to think about this, I know, is, like, prioritizing... <laughs> so is prioritizing, like, camps and, like, plays you can make on the map. I like to call them plays. So it could be farming, it could be ganking, it could be invading, anything, right? Could be fucking recalling, jacking off, whatever it is, right? So in terms of plays on the map, because Lilia was level 2, all of a sudden we have an advantage. Now, if you have an advantage and you don't use it, you're not going to climb, right? Because anyone can fucking do what you just did. Anyone. And guess what? People in Diamond, bro, Master GM are going to do exactly what you just did. So don't feel bad. But the next fucking step is to react to all that information and to prioritize plays you can make. So like I said before, when you were doing your walls, I would have thought about topside immediately, given that Lily was level 2 mid. It's hard to spot, and it's very, like, kind of... I don't know, high-level thinking or whatever. But to me, it's not. I just see it instantly now, okay? But as long as you understand it, right? And you can see things like that and react to that information, even if you just do it, like, once every three games, you're going to learn, right? And even if you make these plays where you invade because you know you have an advantage or, I don't know, like, you gank top lane or some shit, even if you fuck up, you're going to learn, Yeah? Because anyone can tell you, any coach bro is going to tell you, just to, oh yeah, you're playing fiddle six, yeah, just full clear of futures market, get a crab, fuck off, get your sword shoes, yeah, it's GG, just hit level six. Anyone can, probably most coaches would tell you that as well. But it's not how to jungle, right? Because at the end of the day, you're a jungler. I don't care what champion you're playing. So in terms of plays you can make, when you see Lily at level 2, you can gank top to give it pride, you can invade her top side, you might even like want to consider swinging mid to give it priority, so then you can invade, you've got a few options there. But when Lily is level 2 and you give up this crab, so even after doing your raptors and red here, just run straight down to crab. If you run into Yi, Darius has priority, maybe he can come down, maybe Akshon can come down. Now whenever you do make a move like that on the map, how do I set this up? The big difference between, like, pro play and 1500 LP or high elo, you know what it is? Communication, mate. And some cunt standing behind them with a fucking notepad. That's the difference. 
This communication is instant, right? When you're a pro player, because you've got a you've got a headset on, mate. Fifteen hundred LP. You go and watch a game. It's exactly the fucking same. It, it is exactly the same, bro. How they play the game. It is exactly like solo queue, but just with communication. Now, lots of people fucking you know might think it's some god tier you know thing that they can't comprehend. It's not. Go and watch someone fucking high elo play a solo queue game and tell me it's different to how pros play. It's exactly the same. This communication thing, though, is what we have to kind of make up for, right? Because it's not instant, yeah? When you're playing solo queue, there's no voice comms. So we have to make up for this by pinging and typing, in a good way, that is. So when you are thinking about, like, making a play on the map, you communicate that information with your team. So what I was telling you before about, like, reacting to information on the map. If you know what the information is, tell your team about it. Tell the team that fucking Lily is doing two camps topside. Tell the team you want to invade. Tell the team you're ganking top and then going to a fucking topside. Stinger, you interrupt me again with a fucking clip, and I'll behead you. If this doesn't um, if this isn't good, by the way, like you're gone. The audio is staying off. Every audio is staying off after I coached uh, what's his name, fucking Babin, and he had like Benny Hill music being played. Oh my god, that Gragas is fucking insane. What did I just fucking watch? Yeah, right. Okay, so like, yeah, this example is just like, there's a play mid that's more important. And in th this is like another point. But when Stinger makes a play like this, and when you can make a play in your game, all of these camps up here are still going to be up, right? They're all going to still be up. You're not missing anything. You're not losing anything. And when you do go to pressure here, right? Let's say you did make that play. What is probably going to happen? So if you're Lilia and you see the fiddle six running at your blue buff, you're level two, he's level three. What are you going to do? What's your initial reaction to that? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Nice how you've done that. To ping, yeah, to ping for help, right? Like, fucking help me. I've got a Scarecrow, like, running at me. So when she does that, what happens? Her lanes are going to come like this, right? Or maybe like that. Which thinks, oh, oh my god, you know, their lanes are coming to fucking help the leader. It's over. Why is that still good for you? Well, yeah, but what does pressure mean? Anyone can fucking say the word pressure. What does it mean? Yeah, XP and gold, where the... Like, aren't you wasting your time? Mid and top, good. So you indirectly win mid and top because you make that play because you know they have the, uh, the advantage. Good. Do you see how, like, that play would always work? Like, I remember coaching Stinger and his fucking chat was like, oh, bro, you know, if you invade her raptors, this might happen, this might happen, you might die to, like, a fucking mid-draven when you're full HP, and I'm sitting here thinking, like, the fuck is going on here, bro? Yeah? It, it is always gonna work when you have the jungle advantage if you make a play like that. Now, the other argument is, like, if you do overstay and you die, yeah, that's probably not worth in most cases, but even then, it's not even that fucking bad. Because your lanes are still going to get... I mean, it might depend, like, who gets a kill. But your lanes are still going to have, like, a mini lead. So what we're trying to do here is find, like, the optimal play. And the optimal play is one that works in every scenario. So if you, like, throw a scenario at me after I tell you what the best play is, I'm going to fucking guarantee that I will counter whatever you say. Because there's always, like, a reaction to be made. Anyway, let's continue. That's enough, like... So, all pretty much, like, the last 15 minutes, right? What I've just talked about are, like, the jungle funda fundamentals, mate, that you need. And it starts with the enemy champion and just wanting to fucking beat them in the jungle, right? It's not some neutral thing where you both, like, shake hands and say, right, let's just stick to our own size of the map and just gank. And whoever ganks the, you know, lane that's going to carry wins the game. It's not how it works. Thankfully, uh, Lilia hasn't done this, and there she is. So you're still a level above her. Hit her. Hit her, man. Hit her. 
So when you use your Q on the Scuttle Crab, you don't have the Q for her. You don't have the Q for Yi. You don't have the Q for Fiora. Never do that again. Otherwise, it's over. No, actually, don't do that. Um, because, yeah, the most important thing here, I mean, you might be able to secure the crab, but so can she, right? I think it's, like, really fucking coin flip what you just did. So whenever there's, like... <clears throat> what really matters here, right? Unless you were playing, like, maybe... I'm trying to think of someone who can do, like, a lot of damage early game. Maybe, like, Lee Sin. Maybe Zin Zhao, Where you can, like, actually just 1v1 the Lilia. Really quickly, like, in 5 seconds. As Fiddlesticks, these 1v1s are gonna last 15 fucking 20 seconds, right? In 15, 20 seconds, Fiora's gonna be here. Yi's gonna be here. Look where Darius is as well. So before you ever make a play like this on the map is what I call it anyway, like anywhere in the river and beyond, you always ping to your lanes. So when you go like this, I would not even run here now because I would trust the Lilia to have done this. So I would run straight bot crab. Then I would take, take her, uh, her raptors. Yeah, her raptors like, might even be up kind of soon. You might go like bot crab or even like to her Krugs and then bot crab. Like fucking Krugs, bot gank, then do the, the bottom crab. So like this. Because look, Fiora's in lane, she's live. Darius is AFK, right? This is a 2v3. When you go here. You wanted to check here, but don't check. Like, she should have done this already. So checking wastes what? What does it waste? My time, right? Exactly. Your time. Because you're... So the difference between this and, like, you invading her topside... You invading her topside doesn't waste your time... Because, first of all, you're not losing anything here. And I know you're not losing anything in this situation, but you're not winning anything in that situation. Your lanes win. In the worst point. Right? And, like, the worst situation when you invade, when their lanes come and, like, kind of... What is it? Um, what do you call it? Pile onto you or whatever. You still win the map. But here, there's nothing really you're gaining by doing this. And because it's a 2v3 on this side of the map, I would just insta-run like this, and even consider going like that, that, and then that. And then you might even consider just recalling, Sork Shoes, bang, 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 full clear topside again where Darius is. So never think, bro, just because, like, Scuttle Crab is up on this side of the map, there's two Scuttle Crabs. All you have to think about is the map, right? That is the most important tool for any jungler. So on the map right now, you can see that Darius has recalled. Fiora is in lane. It's going to take Darius 25, 30 seconds to get back top lane and on the map, right? So if you do this, you have to do it legit in like 10 seconds before Fiora gets here and even ye. Bot scuttle, yeah, just because of the numbers. If you're at least sin, you can still make this play. If you're a Zinzo, you can still make this play. But look, you don't have your Q for her now, so you could even Q her when she, like, Ws, right? And you probably stop it. And, and she decides to fucking run off over there for some unknown reason. Yeah, look at the damage you do. I mean, look at it. It, it is legit, like, 60 seconds for you to kill someone. Let's go, Akshan. But, like, I already know what's going to happen, right? I already know what's going to happen just because of the, the numbers. So it's all about the map, right? If you ever watch, like, I don't know, let's say Yankos, right? Here's his head. There's his, like, receding hairline. His eyes are going to look at the map every second. Go watch him. Is he live right now? I doubt it. He might be. You go watch Yankos, every second he's looking at the map. You go watch any good jungle, you watch Canyon, every second he's looking at the map. Any good player, to be honest, like, looks at the map every, like, second or two. Because it is information, right? So Lilia, because she's low elo, doesn't double crab you. Which is why, in this elo, you, work, you can always get back in a game, bro. Now... You think this is lost, do you? It's not. Right, the other thing I want to talk about, in terms of, like, the jungle theory, I guess, is that her side of the map always comes first, right? For that reason as well. Because you're not going to lose anything. 
And what happens when you take, like, kind of her side of the map, she is going to check these camps, right? So let's just say off the rip right here, you run straight to her raptors. And let's say you take her raptors. When she recalls or she, like, swings around like this, what is she going to waste by going to the raptors that aren't there? Time, right? It's always time. She's going to waste time. So it's double-edged. You gain, she loses. So you gain, she loses. That's what it looks like, mate, the graph. Look at this. I'm a maths teacher. But seriously, though, that's what happens. It's double-edged, yeah? Which is why if you can win the jungle like this, because some games, bro, like I remember versing um Guts like back in Season 8, I think. I can even remember the game. He was on Kindred. I was on Shaco. I was like three counts ahead of him just because my fucking brain is a lot bigger. And there was like zero kills at 10 minutes. But I won the game because I was thinking like that. Yeah? So some games, like, where you don't have fucking kills, how do you win? This is how you win. And when you get kills on top of it, you're gonna fucking climb to whatever rank. Yeah? So off the base here, you buy your items first. That's great. You buy your items instantly. Good. Now I want you to think about where you're gonna go. So what plays can you make here? Well, let's think. You can go to Gromp. You can go to Wolves. You can probably full clear back top to your number one lane. Yeah, not bad. Maybe five out of ten. You can go to Scuttle Crab. And then you can go like this. Yeah, not bad. Maybe six. You can go straight bot. Maybe it's gankable. Even like Miss Crab and go bot. Yeah. I like that actually a little bit better, to be honest. Because Crab's still going to be there. Maybe six or seven out of ten. Well, the best play is to go straight like that. She was on like 200 HP. So if she recalls 8 seconds, takes her like 30 seconds to get here, you'll get there before her, you can quickly do these with your smite, then you can do the, the scuttle crab or whatever. Easy. So going to scuttle is good, don't get me wrong. But I'd much rather you go to her like raptors, right? Because are they even up? Yeah, okay, so if you're ever going to swing like this, right, into a jungle, swing like that so you can actually see her raptors. If you see just one small raptor here, the camp is up. She's not going to leave raptors, is she? So if you see one, the whole camp's up. Like, it's legit one and a half seconds. And if you wanted to gank mid, you should be doing it before you do scuttle crab. In my opinion. Because look at mid right now. So again, I don't mind you making a play bot or mid because kills for me will always, well, not always, but like 90% of the time come first. Because like that crab becomes even more free. Because there's less defenders to, you know, stop you getting it. So knowing what's happening in these lanes is really important, whatever side of the map you're on. So if you're top lane, right? When you're doing scuttle crab, you're making a play on the map, right? Think about those lanes, what happened. Darius was over here, bro, when you make that play. When you make this play, these lanes, this is slow pushing into Akshan. This has been pushed for God knows how long. And you know Lilia is probably like maybe around here recalling. Or she might even be swinging like that on 200 HP. You never know. But she's going to be transitioning to this side of the map kind of somewhat soon. So you might have like 20 seconds to make a play here or to make a play here before she comes. Or even like just do this. So going to one side of the map, whether you're going there for Scuttle Crab or Dragon, whatever it is, know what is happening in those lanes. So if you see Janna and Caitlyn push past halfway, that lane is pushing into Alistair and Kaiser. Easier to gank, right? But then the next level of thinking is, what's the enemy jungler doing? Because if these guys have the priority, what that means is they probably have higher HP, more minions, maybe even more levels in some situations. They're just stronger at that point. So if the enemy jungler's there backing them up, you lose every single day of the week and you lose the game. That's the next level of thinking. So because you're going to this side of the map, so it's two halves, right? That's bot and that's top. Mid is on both halves. <laughs> Couple of butt cheeks made on the map. So if you're going bot side, you also think about mid. This is pushing into action. So if you want to gank Yi, it should really be right now. Look at him. Look at that lane for you to gank. So good, right? And you would have killed him, I reckon. 
At this point, exactly the same as that level 1 fight. Can you kill Master Yi right now? So if you think about the map, bro, in terms of lines as well, if I draw a line there, that's 10 seconds. Maybe if you Predator, it's like 7 seconds. But in 10 seconds' time, where is Yi going to be? Yeah, he's going to be at his tower, right? Can you kill him if he's under his tower? Of course not. So in your head, it's like you're thinking, you're like imagining in the map what it's going to be like in five seconds. So if he's going to be under his tower, there's no way you kill him, obviously. So at that point in your mind, you should be like, all right, I've actually just missed that opportunity to gank mid. What else is on the map for me? Well, maybe her raptors, but maybe now it's even too late to do this. I still think you can do them. Or what you could do immediately after doing scuttle crab is going straight bot. But even here, like the wave is going to be reset. So look at bot. That next wave that's coming. See, Alistair is even, like, flashed there or some shit. Look at bot lane. The Alistair just, like, flashed in and fucked up his combo, I bet. So, yeah, you sitting mid here, like, this Master Yi... Bro, even if you kill him here, let me put it this way. It's so fucking lucky. Why is Akshan so fucking scared? I mean, I guess he's level 6. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> Look at that, Akshan. Let's go, bro. This must you the genius. But does everything make sense, Arno? That we've just gone through? Don't don't chase, yeah? Because she's going to be here. So, hopefully... When I say don't chase, and then she suddenly appears, you can understand this now, yeah? So you understand why she's here? Yeah, right? Because, like... She's probably done Blue and Gromp. Again, we haven't tabbed yet, so I don't know. She's probably done blue, gromp, top scuttle crab, or like you got the crab, fucking whatever happened, top side. So in terms of resources, yes, good. She's going to be transitioning to like both sides of the map. So when you keep chasing that yi, it's like you have 20, 30 seconds to make a play. It's funny like how I said it earlier, and all of a sudden this happens, right? You like have 20 seconds on her to make a play here because yes, you died, but you're actually going to be on the bot side of the map quicker than she is. So you have like 20 seconds to make a play. And the play you made was to do scuttle crab, and I'm like, doesn't really do much. Gank the mid lane that's pushing. Gank the bot lane that's been pushed up. You have 20 seconds for a, for a 3v2. If you delay it, it's going to be a 2v2. A 3v3. And this is, like, what happens. So it's so important, bro, to, like, know what's happening in the lanes you're pathing towards. Like, that side of the map. Now, unfortunately, fucking Janice here. Here comes Flop. Oh, Flop has just carried the game, mate. Kimmy, Doki, Doki. 1v9. The Janna roam. So this is what happens, like, when you kind of... I don't want to call it overstaying. But you almost, like, overplay it. Where the play that you're trying to make really doesn't exist. It's kind of similar to, like, when I used to play Shaker, right? And I was, um... Sometimes I still do it, actually. If I'm playing AD Shaker and I, like, want to one-shot someone, I might go in and queue in down a lane. And all of a sudden, like, the AD carry support shows up. And then the top laner shows up around me. I'm like, what the fuck? There's three people here now. I thought it was just a 1v1. So it's like, at that point, you should just back off and just admit to yourself, all right, I've missed that opportunity. Time to fucking relax again. Look for golden experience elsewhere. So that's kind of like the similar situation to you in right now. The play mid has gone. There's no way you kill that fucking level 6 Yi when you're level 4 or 5 on fiddle sticks. In my opinion, anyway. You can kill him if the lane is pushing. Because he's going to be preoccupied with the minions, right? He has a reason to, like, kind of overextend. But when the minions aren't there and he's running away, there's no way you kill him. Even when he's in the position he's in, he could have just, like, queued to you and run away. So it's like, you're not just thinking about your own timings on the map, bro, but also, like, everyone else's, and in particular, like, Lilia, right? You notice how this game, how I've just, like, tracked her the whole time? So I've even told you, like, in 20 seconds' time, she's going to be here. Don't chase, because... And Lilia shows up. So it's like you picture what the enemy jungler is doing and where they are on the map. Yeah? So even though you kill her here, which is, yeah, kind of nice, I guess. Akshan fucking doesn't get out. He just runs into the Yi. Let's go. So it's not bad, I guess. But, yeah, it's not great. And that's what we want. We want greatness made on the rift.
So why did you change this? So you buy your items, which is good, and you look mid. Kind of like this, because you buy your items straight away. Because no one's bot. So the enemy team isn't bot. Okay, alright. Honestly, I'm just going to be brutally honest, bro, because that's what I am as a coach. I'm not going to fucking bullshit you. That's not really a reason to, like, go top. Because no one's bot, you go top then. Not really a reason. Why do you think you should go top right now? I, now, to be honest, like, the best play for me is while you're dead, you buy instantly, which is what you do. You buy your items first. Great. Now I'm thinking, well, what about the lanes? What's happening in every single lane? Yeah, possible for your kill. Good. Yeah, you could run, like, straight to a Gronk, possibly, because she might go, like, Krugs, Raptors. Yeah, that's true. That's one thing you could do. But again, before you actually go to a Gromp, it makes it easier going to that Gromp by doing something topside of the map. Run to our Krugs? Fucking hell. Run to our Krugs? <sighs> Fucking Nathan Stinger over here. Golden Mott. <laughs> so you look at your Gromp here and you're like, all right, I'm going to run bot. And then you're like, no, I'm going to run top. I want you to look at this picture while you're dead. I want this screen to be your screen while you're dead. Well, it's grey, mate. Look at this lane. Look how important it is to get here, right? And fucking even sting it. Bro, even Anonymous, the kind I coached to rank 1 AUS, did this, right? When I was specking him, like, on my stream once. There was a top lane which was kind of like this. It was like a Yone. I think it was that Zhu kill bloke. Whatever his name is. And he was like level 6, maybe that HP against a Z level 6 or 7 with that HP. And at that point in the game, like, it's going to be very kind of... It's just going to be an all-in, right? You can just You can just fucking see it. And he went to Krugs instead of just, like, ganking this lane. And I'm like, what the fuck do Krugs mean? And Stinger did it as well once in one of his games when his, like, Nah had priority. That's, like, the same situation if you're, like, Lilia and you run here. When your bot lane has prior. Because this play, this play that you're making in terms of priority is number one. Where the fuck are your Krugs going? Nowhere. Where's Darius gonna go? Fucking back to base if you don't get here. Thankfully, he gets the kill. But in, let's say this, let's say this situation is in 100 games, 50 of them, she wins. 50 of them, this guy wins. If you're here, you win 100 of them. And this lane, at that point, has a fucking big tick. Yeah? So again, whatever side of the map you go towards, right, is dictated by your lanes. That's why you think about at the start where you're going to path. If top lane is a fucking Orn, you don't go there. If bot lane is a Soraka vein, you might go there for a priority. Maybe they're against like an Alistair Samira. You go there for prior. Fine, there's a reason there. And because they're going to have prior, you counter gank, make it a 3v3, you win because of priority. But lanes are everything, yeah? They make it easier to jungle. They make it easier for you to achieve what you want to achieve. And after getting the kill there, or like Darius gets the kill, you can always think about just like running straight to a Grom potentially. Think about it. I'm not saying you do it. But if you think about it, yeah, that's when I know, bro, you are switched on. And even like, um, even some junglers I've coached like Master GM, when we actually have like a session, they might even say to me, well, what about doing that? And I fucking love it because I know they're actually thinking like someone who plays at the highest level. Yeah. Nathan Mott might take them. <laughs> Fucking good, to be honest. I don't want him, like, getting good as a, you know, player or coach, because then I'm going to be out of business, mate. Nathan Mott. Okay, so what's going to happen here? So this happens top, and again, while you're making this run, bro, so good. I love the macro, how you click on the camp on the map. You don't have to do anything. You're not even looking at yourself. I love it. Love it. You also have to think about Lilia, right? The whole time. Because she's everything. We want to fucking win the jungle, yeah? So Lilia, in this situation... It's kind of hard to read here. Because she has two options. So if you can get to the point, bro, not maybe at like this level, but where you think about the Lilia's like potential pathing, it's going to be really important. But she has two options here. She can go like this, or she can go like this. <laughs> If Lilia isn't doing anything, 
Okay, those are just like general... Those are just like generalities, bro. Okay. So going to stomp her isn't a play you make. You know what I mean? Like, what does that even mean? She's never in the game. Well, what does that even mean? So those are like kind of the outcomes of you making a decision in the game based around golden experience and what's happening. That sounds retarded. But what I mean is... If you go to a Gromp, let's just say you go straight Gromp. Let's just say fucking nothing was happening top or whatever. You go straight to a Gromp here and you take a Gromp. You might even do walls first or some shit like that. Right? Making that play based on golden experience and because you think Lily is going to be going Krugs, Raptors, and then you like maybe take both of these camps. And then you might swing around to like your Raptors go like that or you might like gang top and then go like this. Whatever you do after that, those decisions mean that you're going to stomp her. Right? You know what I mean? It's like saying... Everyone fucking says these two terms a lot. Passive and aggressive, right? They're just descriptive words, mate. That's all they are. They don't mean anything. What the fuck does being aggressive mean? What the fuck does being passive mean? Get fucked. All we care about is making the optimal play, mate. That's it. Making the best play. If you're level 1 against someone who's level 2 in lane, are you going to be aggressive? Whatever that means? No, of course not. You're going to run away. But people will be like, wow, he's playing so passive. No, he's not. He's fucking a level down. Yeah, double cooldowns down. So of course he's going to run away. What are you talking about? Or if it's like, if you're playing Riven, you want to be really aggressive in this matchup. What does that mean? Well, we have to talk about like, your positioning. Where do you stand? How do you control the minion wave? Yeah? Maybe it's your first item. That changes. Instead of going D shield, you go D blade or longsword. Right? So these, like, descriptive words and generalizations, like, it's all about how. How do you actually get to that point, then? How do you stomp the Lilia? What does that actually mean? What does that entail? What I'm teaching you here is what it fucking is. All the enemy lanes are winning? What do you mean? I mean, Darius is stomping, no? You just press tab. By the way, press tab more than I know, yeah? I don't know how many times you've pressed it, but, like, I can't even pause it on that tab. There you go. I've just paused it. Their lanes are winning, bro. Their lanes are not winning. This guy is 303. Right? 303, okay. This guy's still going to have, like, kind of similar gold. This guy's level 6, so, yeah, he probably is stronger, but she is 04. Bot lane are going to have the same amount of gold as well. Maybe Janna's like got a lead, but who cares about that? So, in terms of their lanes winning, like... Gotta look at the scoreboard, mate. Look at this. Bro, if I could, I would bite your arm off, by the way. If I had this in a game, I would bite your fucking arm off. In my games, I've got Pyong Tar on fucking Ezreal. 0-3, doesn't know how to control a wave. I've got some barcode mid laner playing fucking, you know, LeBlanc, as if he hasn't got a fucking keyboard. You've got a guy with four kills at six minutes. Your Darius is 20 up. Level six, 212. Oh, I love it. Zero four, Fiora? Every Fiora I'm against is 20 and 0. I would bite your fucking arm off for this, for this game. In fact, I would take these two over fucking Pyong Tar and whoever I had, like, support. Oh my god, bro. This is this is a dream right here. This is a dream, bro. <laughs> but yeah, that's just like a different mindset, mate. Like, you look at the, like, what's bad in the game. Just expect that shit, first of all. Yeah, Pyong <laughs> Tar and me. Just expect it, right? First of all, to like one, two, three lanes to lose. Who cares? So when that play happens top, let's just think. So Darius kills her top. So you have a few plays here. You could even, like, run to his lane. First of all, like, he should kill the cannon and the, uh, maybe a melee or two to freeze it. But if you want to push this lane out, right, I think it's actually a good play. Because there's every chance that Lilia... Okay, so remember, whatever you can see on your screen, you can see as well. What is this clip? Is this the recent clip? Oh, one a minute ago. Get fucked, mate. <laughs> What was I going to say, mate? Yeah, okay, so that screen you see here, 
Lilia has the same info, right? So if you're Lilia, what might you do? You might run top, yeah? Now Darius survives, which is good. You might think like, oh yeah, that play is over. But actually, if you're the enemy Lilia and you're running top, is that play still on to gank him? Of course it is. So what you might even consider doing here is doing your Krugs in a position that allows you to go top. Now, that is fucking really like, honestly, I don't want to say in depth, but like into the future, right? Okay, don't worry if it's a counter gank. Don't fucking put a word to it, all right? I don't want to hear one more description. What a toxic coach. I don't want to hear one more descriptive word, all right? Whether it's a counter gank, whether it's a fucking failed gank, whether it's a whatever, I don't care what it is. It's the right player, yeah? So you're not counter ganking. You're not making that play to counter gank. You're making that play because you know that Lilia might run top, knowing that both of these guys were 300 HP. Darius has just survived. He's on 100 HP right here. And the minion wave is in a position without TP that maybe he freezes it, maybe he doesn't, but I want a position here just in case Lilia runs up here. Counter gank? Fucking whatever it means. A reaction gank? Whatever the fuck it is. The, like, the, the best one I can give you, bro, example of, like, what you're kind of talking about, which is fine, by the way, I don't really give a shit, because you're kind of right. Everyone who calls a fucking level 3 recall because you, like, you wave manage kind of, like, perfectly a cheater recall. What the fuck is a cheater recall? Is this different to any other recall? Like, do you fucking press B for a different amount of time? Like, do you hold it down or some shit? No, it's 8 seconds. You go back to base. Exactly the same you would after, like, wave 4, Right? What a cheater recall is, is just you managing minion ways perfectly. And you get a recall off. That's it. But people call it a cheater recall because they want to fucking sound smart. Information gank, mate. Am I being a bit too, bit too fucking upfront, direct? Sorry, Zion, I've been through, bro, I've listened to, like, that many necks, right? You know that. That sometimes it does build up. Uh, thanks for following, Chitteru, dude. Chitter, Chitteru. 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 I don't know how to say your name. Chid. The Chid, mate. Chitty. Yeah, thanks, bro. Yeah, LS tries the narrative because he's never been high elo before and probably, like, wants to act as if he fucking knows something that others don't. Guys, this is a cheater recall, and uh, this is how you do it. This is elite. This is something that only only I know about, and I've uh, I've coined the term, so it makes me look really fucking smart. Have you? All right, I've I've, I've really got sidetracked here, eh? Yeah, I don't know what what's happened to my notifications. I'm sorry. So if you want to gank this, go to the right. Oh, they had it watered. Alright. <laughs> Look at the Alistair here, mate. Is that me? Oh! Oh, fuck yeah, Ali. Hit him away, Alistair! W him! Oh, nice W. Alright. So here, I would either run to the... Now, unfortunately, they have a ward. Actually, really smart ward by flop. Budget flop. Look at that ward, mate. That's actually really good. So when you're ulting on Fiddlesticks, yeah, I like the play. Of course, this is the right play. If you're going to full clear here, which I still don't think is bad, I think, like, hovering top would have been the better play. And then, like, maybe you go like this or you help him shove the wave. But you can still do this. That's the point. Okay, so you hit six here. Where you hit six from... Where you hit six from where you ult from is the most important thing right like what happens after you ult is fucking easy yeah like my dad can jump on and fucking do well if you're like ult is in the middle of five people but it's like actually getting the ult in the middle of five people so your positioning before you ult is everything it's what you do before you ult that matters So in terms of where you ult here, when you see this ward, you should immediately go like this, behind this wall here. So this, any wall like this, bro, is like a bit of a bit of fog. Yeah, it's in, uh, what is it? Yeah, it's just in fog, I guess. It's outside their scope of vision, if you will. Yeah, because that wall is going to kind of block you off. And what you can do straight after it is just jump over here with your predator. Yeah. 
So you can press Predator and your ult at the same time, so you come in like fucking... A lunatic, mate. Yeah? So where you actually ult from is so important. Whether it's here, if this isn't warded when you come down here, of course you can rotate like this. I would actually do this near your pink though, because maybe there's like a sneaky ward here that sees you. Oh yeah, shit. Is that copyrighted? Can I say that or not? Scope of vision? Oh my god. Actually, it's mine now. I've got it patented, mate. So if anyone says scope of vision after tonight, you're gone. You're coming to the courts, mate, with me, yeah? Because I really like to fucking sound smart. It's way more important than being smart, you know that. So yeah, that's the point there with your ults. Not just for this ult, I mean like every single ult. Setting the ult up is the most important thing. So like vision, control wards, and then your positioning in regards to the enemy team's vision as well. The scope of vision. <laughs> And uh, here comes six months in Plowed on Alistair. Here he comes, mate, with the Hex Flash. Oh! That's big. But if you have your Sork, if you have Predator pop there, I think you can get to Caitlyn, right? Like, easily. Yeah, you'd easily kill the Kate. So you'd kill Kate and the Janna here, if you had it popped. So as you're holding, press your Predators. Uh. So even though this play goes, like, kind of south or whatever, do I really care? No, because I think, like, you're in the right position, to be honest. You know what I mean? I don't think it's that bad. Like, you just hit level 6, these two are both low. I think you'd kill them both if you had your Predator, and if you ulted from this position, you'd kill them both, like, instantly. And then maybe Kaiser gets here. Another reason why I like it is because Lilia, look where she is. So she might be here in another game, but even still, like... I'm happy because you're kind of just ahead of her. Look at that Alistair. You can definitely kill both. If you loop round like that into there, you are and what is it? R and five. You're gonna be here. And Alistair, numb nuts, will hopefully get the Janna. Yeah, and then you can like when Yi Q's, maybe you get oh no, you wouldn't Oh no, this would, because you'd um the cooldown would go down when you get the kill or assist, right? So you'd actually have the stopwatch for Yi's Q as well. Kaiser didn't come? Yeah, of course it's fucked, bro. But it doesn't matter. Like, you win this on your own. Fuck the Kaiser. Like, I'm not even looking at the Kaiser. Who cares? You could have killed Kate and maybe Janna. Like, hopefully Alistair would have hit his Q. If he doesn't, like, you can still outplay them here. If you die, Kaiser kills Yi, if you play it right. So if you kill, like, even here, right? You've got your stopwatch up now. So if you killed the Kate instantly with your ult and your Predators... Your stopwatch would be up for the EQ. That's really important. Then Alistair might be able to, like, tank him, and then Kaisa comes as well, and you can kill the Yeet. And Darius is 1v2ing top, by the way, Zyno. So if you say that every lane is winning for the enemy team, that Darius is 1v2ing top on full HP. All right? Sorry. That was a bit toxic. Let's go, Kaisa. Yeah, good movement. Good movement. Running back into Pope on Yeet. There we go, Pope. That probably is Pope. So at this point in the game, I'll go for a little bit longer. I'm going to go until 10 minutes, to be honest. How long have I gone for? Normally, I do 45 minutes, mate, and that's it. Zaino, how long have I gone for? I trust you. What's going on, Wyshako? 71 ping. This is, um, this is the Japanese server. Thirty minutes? What time did I fucking download this? What's in my downloads, mate? Some Pokemon games. Nine twenty. It's definitely been. I reckon it's been forty-five, mate. But I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm going until ten minutes. In the game. Right. So here. Okay. You're just that much of an alpha, you can smite it now, but you're that much of an alpha, you get it down to like 200 HP and then you smite it. If you're going to smite it, smite it on 900, yeah? 
it's funny i used to have um, i don't know if he's watching big george mate not judge 69 someone else who i coach and he'd do that all the time <laughs> he's he's like uh i think he's silver now actually in the uh in the old jungle role plays a bit of fiddle six which is fantastic but he did that all the time it's like get a camp down to 100 hp then smite it if you're ever unsure look here make your hut bigger to be honest, I'd just say that anyway, bro. Like, make your HUD bigger. Like, make it like... That. Because in terms of like this, this means that when you have your stopwatch up, you're going to press it. When you have this up, you're going to press it. You know what I mean? Like, you're not going to miss as much. For example, just, just look at my latest montage, mate. This is why it's important, like, having a HUD, which is like kind of comfortable for you. I want you to look at my heart in every single fight and you tell me if I leave a cooldown on. Yeah, I checked your fucking comment. You're a neg. So let's have a look at cooldowns, right? My Q just came back up. Look at the rest of them. Zonia's W, E, Ignite, Smite, R. Uh, everything's on cooldown. They come back up. I'm on cooldown again. Now my W and fucking E's back up. Everything on cooldown again. That's what I want to see with you. So in every fight, like with that ultimate, when I see you have your predator, your boots still up, I'm like, righto. When you use your Q on the scuttle crab at level three, I'm like, righto. Yeah. Okay, now what, what were we doing before this, mate? Let's have a look. Right, so again here, coming out of base, yeah? This is the last point. When you come out of base, again, you're looking at this fight. So you buy your items a little late than normal. So Zyna, buy your items straight away. You were doing it as well before this. So it's still not bad, don't get me wrong. But again, if you can make it better, that's what we care about. See how like we're, oh, what do I do? What do I, all right, let's go, let's go. If I were you here, what do you think it what what do you think that I'm thinking about right here? In fact, don't even think about that. Just take your time. What do you think? What like where on the map is the most important right now, do you think? I saw someone do this in the LSO, by the way. So if anyone fucking is watching from the LSO, it might even be the jungler mate who's watching. They don't even do this, mate. So take your time. I want you to tell me like where on the map is the most important right now. And remember what I said, when you path towards one side of the map, what do you have to think about? So Lily is, uh, is important, the most important for sure. Generally speaking, but sometimes when your lanes are doing well, yeah? So Drake, I don't really think so. So even though, like, your team's on a reset here, the other team could go to Drake, Darius isn't there, and they win. Because they're winning both sides of the map, right? They just won that fight. Their year's kind of fed. So if you fight a drag, 4v4, you lose. You have no idea? So just think about what's happening in the game. So what did I say after that fight? I said something was happening elsewhere on the map, and I said, someone on your team is winning, even though you said all their lanes are winning, right? Just tell me, just tell me now, because it's like kind of live. I want you to get it quick. So it's not something that's happened in the last 30 seconds. You can see it now. 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 Yeah, good. So why is Darius important? He's big. He's a big boy, isn't he? He's big, mate. It's Pope Show 3 in the top, and he's a big boy. Save him. Good. Why might you have to save him, though? Like, why is he in danger? He's fed, and he still might 1v2, but... Yeah, good. Lilia might go there. Remember, she sees that information that you're seeing right now. She... Yeah, or ye. She can see... Or Janna. Fucking fl budget flop mate might be running there. She can see that the Darius is pushing into the tower. She's gonna run there. Janna might run there. 
You could even ping Alistair here if you're a really fucking firehead to come top. Because you got Scuttle Crab, Rift Held, her whole top side. If you want to get to this enemy Nexus, you don't do it by 4v4ing when you're fucking bot lane and mid lane are behind. Oh my god, a dragon. <laughs> what are you going to do, bro, if you lose the dragon? I'll tell you what you fucking do, mate. I'll tell you what you do. Unless Darius, or unless you're really fed, unless Darius runs like this off a reset and even tells you that, then you can go to Dragon. That's the only time. You just run straight like that. Someone in the LSO didn't do this as well, mate. And I can't remember the matchup. I think it was set against Lee Sin. His set was level 7 or level 8 with a red buff. The Lee Sin was level 6 or level 7. He was leveled down. And the lane was pushing into the Lee Sin. And I can't remember what jungler he was playing. But they can just dive the lease in. Instead, he goes like this. Krugs to Krugs. Nice play, bro. That's the pro scene over here, mate. How do you know her top side is up? Well, I mean, we don't. But her blue buffs is coming soon. And there are still resources over here. And Darius is pushing into this tower. And because this guy is strong and stomping lane. And his ultimate's up very soon as well. You can always think about diving. You might think about doing Rift Held with the Darius, just ping to him. If there's no dive on, but there will be, trust me. Or what you can do is even like kind of just sit here and wait for them all to come. It obviously depends like what's happening on the map as you're running there. Yeah. But I would want to see your mouse like just anywhere along that line. And that's just based on the information you have. You know Darius is really strong. He was just 1v2ing for fuck's sake. The enemy for your aura is like 0-5. You know how you win games? By going to an enemy lane that is 0-5. You get this tower. You get Rift Held. You get their whole top side. Then you win mid because their mid lane will go duh and run over here. You kill her as well. Then you get mid tower. Then you tell Darius to fucking run towards like dragons when they're up. Then you win the 5v5s and the game ends. This guy is going to carry. After five minutes, you are going to know, for the most part, who's going to carry a game. Is this guy going to carry? Is this Alistair going to carry? You just see his Q? Nah, that's not important, but yeah. Right, that's it. That's it for the VOD, mate. Any questions, I know about what we've been through? Does that make sense, by the way? Like, why this looks like a better play just to run to this side of the map here? Well, I reckon he just, it's actually me on a smurf. So to save the carry, yes, that's the description, but that's not why you do it. You do it because in terms of golden experience, you are going to get a lot more where Darius is than where your fucking Alistair and bot lane is. Even though your blue buff's up, oh my god, even though dragon's up, you're going to give up a dragon. Rift, this, this is up soon, this is up soon, this tower's there, the enemy champion is there, right? What if Darius resets? Then you can ping him to go to Dragon because top lane doesn't matter. You can just do Rift Herald, just do Scuttle Cry, but then Yee's gonna be there. At that point, I'd just ask Darius to come to come to Drake because Fiora's was like zero five out of the game. Top lane doesn't matter at that point. So I type in chat. If you ping on the way, yeah, you ping on the way. So again, remember if you're ever gonna do something on the map. Like from this onwards, if you're ever doing something on that map, what the fuck is that drawing? It's a bat mate. If you're ever doing something on that map, you ping on the way. You ping for assistance. You danger ping. If anything, you know, whatever Lilia is doing, you ping as well. 